the start if you are that way inclined. Uh, now we've got a special guest coming up in a moment. The world's most admired man, not a bad title to be awarded, but that <laughs> is what happened last week to the billionaire businessman Bill Gates. It's four decades since he found Microsoft. Back then he had a revolutionary vision of putting a PC on every desktop and in every home, and it worked. Twelve years later he was on the Forbes list for the world's richest people. Within another decade he topped it and has done almost every year since. Yes, I can see him smiling as we go through these <laughs> figures. Uh, he's now worth an estimated £63 billion, but he and his wife Melinda have pledged to give most of it to charity, leaving a relatively modest £7 million to each of their three children. One of their key targets is eradicating malaria, and today Mr Gates will announce a further £700 million to go towards fighting the disease, which kills close to half a million people every year. He's in London to make that announcement, uh, but he is joining us, which is brilliant. Uh, thank you very much, Bill Gates, for joining us here on BBC Breakfast. Morning to you. Um, first of all, I just wanted to ask you, um, why choose malaria to focus particularly on? Well, malaria is an awful disease, and our foundation uh, works on all the diseases uh, that kill children in, in poor countries. So pneumonia, Diarrhea and malaria are the big three, and uh, as you said, we've made progress on malaria, but the last few years, uh, the mosquitoes have evolved resistance, so uh, the deaths actually went up, and so we need to rededicate ourselves uh, to get those numbers down. I think, uh, Mr Gates, the last time uh, we were speaking about you on this programme was when you, were, you made a comment, um, I think last year, saying that Brexit, if Brexit goes through, it mustn't be used as an, ex an excuse to slash aid funding and divert efforts away from things like what you're talking about today. Are you still concerned that that might happen or could be happening? Well, UK uh, voters should be proud uh, that their government is quite generous and is making sure this money goes to important causes to help out countries in Africa. Uh, the government, the Prime Minister uh, yesterday uh, reiterated a strong commitment to help in malaria. So uh, the UK and the US government are our best partners in this quest to cut the cases in half again. Um, you talk a little bit, I know, about how malaria is in some ways a moving target. Um, just tell us what's been going on because there have been big successes, haven't there? Absolutely. What happens is that if we keep the same insecticide out there, the mosquitoes evolve and it no longer works and so the current bed nets in lots of parts of Africa are not effective. Uh, I'll show at a conference today as part of the Commonwealth Summit a new generation of bed nets uh, that the uh, Liverpool School has uh, helped create and we're going to get that out to Africa and that if we get it out to all the right places uh, that's why we think we can get those numbers going down again. Uh, what sort of interest in uh, I, I, I'm Try not to make this sound like an ignorant question. In, in, you talk about uh, how we're responding here in the UK. What about in the US, where your president was elected on a platform of America first? What is the concern about something like malaria and, and affecting that in the way you're talking about in other countries in the world? Well, fortunately, in the, the US, the aid budget is set by the Congress. And so uh, there have been no cuts at all, including a, a very generous amount of money that goes to malaria. So. Uh, the U.S. is the biggest funder here, and uh, number two and three are our foundation and the U.K. DFID. Uh, we have many other donors, but those are the big three. Um, I want to ask you, uh, while we have you here, about so many other things. Um, can I ask you a little bit about uh, social media? There's an extraordinary rise on social media, and you, of course, are very much present on that. <laughs> um, Facebook particularly. Uh, was your data breach, as far as you know? Uh, no, I don't, I don't think so. You know, I'm a public figure, and so... You know, who I friend on Facebook, I have a, a very public account. But this was a, a very serious issue. And, uh, you know, Facebook apologized and, you know, working hard to uh, figure out what should the simple privacy promise look like. We're seeing a picture now of, on uh, Mark Zuckerberg's page, uh, Facebook page, a picture of you and him. I know you, you know each other very well. How do you think that he and Facebook have dealt with the scandal? Well, they've committed to do better. And, uh, you know, I... I think Mark uh, is a great person, he's got great intentions here. Uh, he's at the center of some very tough issues about what is free speech versus what is hate speech and how do we get people still talking to people they disagree with and exactly when should your data be used. Uh, uh, so I, you know, I think they'll do their best and work with governments on, on what the new set of regulations should be.
Mm. Um, I'm really interested because you, you know, you are so much at the forefront of all of this, mm. and I think your dream was what, to have a PC in every home. I mean, now we've got one in every hand, virtually. Um, you know, what's your assessment? Is it a good thing? Yes, I think, uh, although it comes with some negatives because, you know, criminals use the latest tools and people who uh, want to spread hate use the latest tools. Overall, uh, it should let us reach out to each other, uh, stay in touch with each other, you know, learn the latest things, you know, share malaria data and uh, get people to uh, get galvanized behind important causes. But um, understanding exactly what the promise on privacy should be, uh, you know, Facebook had to apologize because they surprised their users with the, the latest episode. Do you sometimes, I mean, you've been vastly successful in this area. Do you sometimes, you know, wrestle with the sort of po positive and negative sides of it? Because there's huge positives, of course. We've been talking today, though, about, you know, um, Russian threats to cyber security, about um, security of our children. I know you're the father of two daughters as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you must worry about your own children sometimes. And, and the, the beast, in some ways, you've helped unleash. Well, in innovation, you know, when the car came along, you know, it, it wasn't uh, without problems including car wrecks and what how parents should deal with that uh, you know for my kids it was always the question of what age they would get cell phones what the policies would be so parents do need to be engaged here they can't just assume that it's going to be used all for uh, good things I mean, let's just talk about cyber security in general because we know um, you know that there's so much sort of impact and concern about that moment are Western governments do you think doing enough no I think uh, they're adding their expertise uh, but, you know, the idea of how you take people who've been more uh, classic military and understand the what does a cyber threat look like, how do you get the top technical people in there, uh, all the governments are having to uh, scramble uh, to make sure that they're sophisticated, and yet, you know, there's rules even for government. It's The rules are more strict for companies, but, you know, governments are having to figure out, okay, what what is it that they won't be able to see and how do they still enforce the laws and avoid terrorism? What do you think is the next sort of giant technological stride that we will make? Maybe, I don't know, five, ten years down the line? Well, the fact that computers can now see uh, means that uh, a lot of tasks uh, uh, can be automated and, you know, the dream of robots, uh, that is going to happen. Uh, it'll make a lot of things more efficient, uh, but uh, you know, it means we have to train people better because parts of the jobs market will be different. Uh, so overall, that will increase our productivity. It will be a good thing. Okay, I want to ask you a question. I mean, you choose and, and to make, spend so much of your money on, on charitable causes, all sorts of different causes. And um, what's, your, what's your biggest luxury? Uh, well, I, you know, my biggest luxury is that when I travel, uh, I have a plane so I can go lots of places and you know it's kind of a ridiculous luxury but it allows me to get to Africa a lot get to to Europe a lot uh, that's a, a real luxury okay um, it's really good to speak to you thank you very much indeed and, uh, and being yet yeah, the world's most admired man have you got any tips for Dan all right that's a bit unnecessary <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. He's not going to answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Bill Gates, really a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you very much indeed. Perhaps. No tips. Perhaps no wisely, tips. no tips. Uh, if you missed that, he was uh, last week, was it mo mo voted the most, most admired, admired man, man in the world. Uh, you talk about the figures. I mean, I know he's, he wouldn't want to talk about it, but over the, uh, the years, he and his wife, Melinda, have given away $28 billion, which is a staggering amount of okay, money, isn't, isn't it? it? It is indeed. Um, and great to speak to him here on Breakfast. Um, it's 20 past eight. Um, Kara's out and about, and she's um, had a lovely morning this morning. And where are you? And, and look at these friends you found. Oh, aren't they gorgeously? Good morning. I'm at Kenwood House, which is in northwest London, and we've seen a little family of goslings. They're with their parents, the Egyptian geese, and earlier they were just sitting under their mum, keeping nice and cosy. They were very reluctant to get out, but she made them get out, and off they went for a walk, had some breakfast, a swim, and now they're coming out again to bask in the sunshine.